I see. So we can teleport to the planet that the sun's light is shining on. The sun has been a prominent motif throughout this all. No, not... Sure, to Saturn, like I said I was going to. Oh boy. This is the Fire Alchemist. Great, we're in an active volcano. That seems safe. No, it doesn't. It seems like we're gonna die. What is this place? Frankly, this feels sort of Martian. Whoa! We just fly upstairs, don't we? I suppose... But that soldier thought we were just normal people, so he must just look like normal people. Okay. I thought... I, I mean, I don't know why we would go down these stairs, but I thought we might be able to. What are these slots, though? Are they... They almost look like open graves. Perhaps they're meant to, uh, if the lava rises up, to sort of trap it a little bit? To keep it from getting into the main building? Frankly, if you have to do that, this strikes me as not a place where anyone should live. This is not a safe place to be. This is an impressive looking building though. Wow. Like these things on the roof, they kind of resemble some of those, uh, fish statues that are on the buildings of, on the roofs of some fancy Japanese buildings. The entrance, eh? Closed pending final exorcism. Entry is forbidden by order of the Grand Inquisitor pursuant to AGE? Code 15354750. Okay. So, this place... Yeah, we can't get in because there's an exorcism pending. That darn Inquisition bureaucracy. I believe there was a Zork game called the Grand Inquisitor. Um, in any case, what are we going to do in that case? Can we not head over to find a side entrance? No, I guess not. Actually, hold on. It looks like there's a window right there. I'm not the only one who saw that, right? We could try and get in through that. You might say that it's unwise to go into a place that's marked exorcism pending. But I would argue it's unwise to be here to begin with. And I don't think we're any ordinary person. We have some kind of stake in all this. Wait, what? Oh yeah, um... Yeah, this is the starting area again. So... What? Oh, we can't go through there. Huh? A coin? Yeah, that's a coin, all right. In... Imp... Or something we trust. Zorkian currency, huh? Or... Whatever the name of this country is. Heat and light transform the world. It's true, actually. Igneous rock. And metamorphic rock is also a product of heat, too. Intense heat and pressure. Hold on. We were just back here, weren't we? This is where that inscription was. We could go back here. Not that there's much to see. This reminds me of the uh, Koopa Kingdom. Well, we have a coin. What on earth can we do with this? It really does look like some kind of mausoleum. These could be grave pits, and these are slots for the bodies in the walls. Oh, here we go. What the heck? Did you just... How did you do that? I think this confirms that we're not human, although we might be able to pretend to be. Wait, every Zork mid. I suppose that's the currency. 
And we, every Zork mid brings you prescience from the six gods of emotion, huh? Oh, it's a donation box. Um. Sure. Oh, it just dispenses fortune cookie-like things? I suppose it perhaps should not be, uh, that surprising. The hips curve? Oh, I see, it's a back. Well, I guess even the church here is uh, corrupt and is indeed, in fact, haunted if the, or, no, not haunted, there's a demon here. If we are to believe that information about an exorcism. But what is this place? There's a bulletin board. Here is a photograph of who I suppose are some of the um, uh, priests. Condolences to the family of Father Goffman, who was banished after muttering in his sleep the forbidden words, Hello, sailor. The church frowns on prostitution. I can't say I'm surprised. Condolences to the family of Father Mulligan, who was drawn and quartered for ringing the seventh tone to the great implementer out of order. Measures have been taken to prevent such tragic errors in the future. But this tragic error is just because you're blindly following your dogma. At this point, I'm going I almost feel like this country deserved a rot. Uh, but sometimes I feel that way about my own country. Really, I think that how you'd feel... I, I'm, of, I'm of the opinion that if you live anywhere long enough, you form that opinion of it. But here I'm just forming it very quickly because I'm being exposed to nothing but the evils of Uthoria, or whatever this place was called. Oh yeah, I see, so they're the, Zor, uh, the Zorcastrian priests. We welcome the Burton family who has renounced the absurdities of Brogmoid cult and accepted the wisdom of, Zora of Zork Rastrianism. And finally, uh, congratulations to Alviria Flatman, who has won the f a free plot of land in a new development in the up-and-coming Valley of the Sparrows. Oh, the Flatman family again. It's like an entire insidious union of all these evil powers in the world. Of church and state and now they're been subjected to hell an emblem of fire huh did they literally worship fire then I mean I guess so the real Zoroastrians didn't actually worship fire though their rituals so prominently involved it they worshipped a Hura Mazda was his name Creepy. No, you are hearing the implementer's call. Really creepy. Mast and runes mark the way! Above and below the fiery towers. What the? What? What is this? I remember in Don Quixote. There's a chapter involving some guys who have a talking iron head and it turns out to function because a pipe is connected to it going into a lower room and someone speaks into it. But these are pre-recorded. Discovering time and eternity, nothing at all. They call for secrets and hidden powers. Some monks long dead. That was the play. What in the world? Did you see the way that one's eyebrows were moving? Why? What the, what expression is these? What are they even saying? Oh, I see. So we have to keep in mind the notes, and we have to keep in mind this is gonna be a challenging one. I'm gonna need to note what each one is saying and what exactly these correspond to and then I'm going to, going to need to arrange them appropriately, right? Yeah. Before we do that... No, I feel like if I take another step, something is going to kill us. Let's just get to the bottom of this and get to the bottom of it now. After I save. It's a monk's long dead. That was the play. 
The monks long dead. That is the clay. Okay. Discovering time and eternity, nothing and all. Discovering time and eternity, nothing and all, spoken in a goofy voice. Discovering time and eternity, nothing at all. Uh, I'm sorry. So what does that have to do with either of these symbols? I'm not entirely convinced that it has anything to do with them. Uh... What if I... Yeah, I don't want to mess with this yet. You know, I know I said it, I felt dangerous. But let's just see what else there is in here. This appears to be a dead-end corridor, so let's go up here. This is a big monastery. Oh, a photo, or a photo. A painting of a, uh, village. It appears to be made out of adobe or something. I wonder when that was painted. Is that what contemporary cities in Zork look like? I wouldn't know. Now this looks more 18th or 19th. No, actually this is a very romantic looking painting in comparison to that sort of Renaissance style painting there. This is Baroque. I'm not even quite sure what I'm looking at, other than I think it has something to do with religion. Clearly this is not a religion that frowned upon visual representations. Oh no. Look how many books there are. Oh, but we can't look at quite all of them. Okay. I shouldn't say, oh no, I mean, I'm a book collector after all. Let's see what we have here. I mean, I do love books, and this is literature from a very different place. Brother Gregory, huh? I suppose that's probably... Wait, they're all brother something or other. It's a nice looking one, Brother William's book. Can we look at this one? No. Is there any rhyme or reason to this? I suppose these are all just different manuscripts uh, put out by different monks, right? What makes Brother Jeffrey's important? Over, I don't know, Brother... Brother... Shine. Shane, oh, Brother Shane. Well, I don't know either. I guess it just goes to show that history always favors us. That who history favors is often quite arbitrary. Here's something we can read. The book of Brother Castro? The merchant Yorick, himself a simple man, grew dissatisfied with his simple trade, his simple gods, his simple life. Seeking only truth. He prayed to the implementers and heard nothing, because he could find no door to the heavens, no portals to the plains of a tree. Yorok hid himself in a deep mountain cave and followed a daemon down the forking forks, curving curves and, lab and labyrinthian labyrinths Ugh. that lead down into the underworld. Oh, I suppose this is in the same continuity as Ultima. The devil, Yorick reasoned, being the devil, would keep less exclusive company. Fair enough. An interesting parable, I suppose. Um... Can we look at that book? No, I guess not. Although now that I look at it, it looks like it's another copy of the same manuscript. Wait, no it's not. It's a similar illustration though, sort of creepy. A door opening up with the red pouring out must be the gates of hell, or the door anyway. When on the third day, the earth beneath his feet began to glow red hot with fire and the stench of sulfur pierced the air, York quite rightly assumed that he had reached the underworld. As the daemon quickened his step, a broad stone door flung open just for a moment in the darkness. When the daemon slipped past the door as Yurik caught upon his cloak and was pulled inside, the stone clanging shut behind him. The air was so sm the air was so thick with black smoke that the devil, Yurik reasoned, could not be far off. These looked like proper illuminated manuscripts, judging from the lettering. But maybe I should look at this central book first. What is it? 
Saint Yorok. Wait, Brother Malvo. That's the alchemist, right? I probably said the name wrong. The book is metaphorically a prison, judging by the sound. Is there, or is it a cage? Is this religion itself a cage to them? But more visions, huh? So, Lucian was arrested by his own father. Cain really did know no love. So these must be the further accounts of what happened to Saint Yorick. Miraculously... Or wait, is this the ending, or is... Which one is the next book? Is it this one? Yes, this must be the next part of the story. But in his path, demons of all sorts, larger and smaller, lesser and greater, willy, or wily and woolly-headed, pleasant and not, thronged towards the most immense demon of all. This demon, surrounded by a great ring of infernal fire, stood between all hell and the Lord of Lamentation himself. As Yoruk's demon, a lesser melancholy sort, approached the great daemon of the threshold, he drew from his side a bronze shield and hurried past the ring of fire untouched. But Yoruk let go of the demon's cloak with a yelp and fell to the ground. O oh, ye with the fate of a hunk with O oh, ye with the faith of a hungus. We've heard about hunguses before. I'm not sure what a hungus is, but I get the impression it's nothing good. They have a bad rep anyway. Miraculously, as a number of demons stopped to heckle in anticipation of Yorick's fiery death, Yorick saw his chance. He plucked a light bronze shield studded with five brilliant red rubies from the side of a careless daemon and plunged his way into the ring of fire. When the flames touched his shield, they fell to his side, dissipating into pungent black smoke. Yorick, armed only with the simple blade of a simple merchant, slew the great demon of the threshold in his surprise and made his way down to the devil, who, reasonably amused, taught Yorick the great mysteries of the cosmos. Huh. It's an interesting story, but I'm surprised that he was made a saint. It sounds more like a fairy tale than the tale of a saint. Tales of saints would probably just involve him overcoming the devil or something, maybe like Saint Anthony. What a strange place for a monastery. What happened to everyone, though? The building is elegant, but are they all dead? Probably. Oh, more alchemical looking symbols. Wait, what? Is it a clock? Probably. Let's leave it be for now. This is a very big building. Yeah, it's locked. I bet you most of these doors are though, aren't they? It's a duplicate of that painting from before. Clearly there are a lot of writhing nudes. Those are common in Baroque painting. And Baroque painting was after all very religious. And this, once again, it's rather cosmopolitan. This looks Persian because Islam proscribed the uh, drawing of anything that was, like, real. It, uh, a lot of those countries ended up writing with, uh, or writing, drawing with words, making pictures out of letters, or making abstract geometric designs instead. This appears to show an apocalyptic scenario. 
I'm not quite sure what we're looking at here. I think it's probably the crowds looking on in horror as God's judgment pours down upon the world, or the God's judgment, plural. Maybe the clock thing in the middle, whatever whatever hand it's pointing at, is what door will be open, right? So now this door could be open. This is an enormous monastery. Anyway, don't want to get turned around. No, it doesn't work that way. Well, how are we going to get out of here? Which door do we come in through? Must be that open door. Go figure. There's still monks making illuminated manuscripts, huh? Even though we also live in an era with photography. I suppose there are some people who renounce the world after all. Given what we're seeing of it, I'm not sure I can blame them. Although look at this, what is this, some sort of early capitalist workshop? This is a sort of hopeful image, an image of societal development or betterment, you know? Of people hard at work. Although the monks are probably hard at work in their own way, aren't they? Though they're just hard at work in anticipation of the end. And I suppose in that sense that all transcendental religions could be characterized as death cults. Here is probably a painting of a historical fire, like the Great Fire of London or something. But here it's clearly not London. You know, I'm gonna get out of here. I just keep getting a bad feeling. Even though this place feels a lot safer than Iron Dune, even though it's basically on fire and is made of wood. I don't know, it, it seems somehow worse for feeling safer. Okay, in we go. Another vision, huh? What are you doing here? Wait, no! Get out! This, this place is shut down! There's evil here! Evil! There's demons everywhere. Upstairs. In the master's room. Master's gone. Disappeared. But, and what of me? Who's left to protect me? If I hear one more demon bellow, I'll go mad. It's done. I'm mad. So there are still people here. And there really are demons, or something like them. Because that couldn't just have been an auditory hallucination because we heard it. Though then again, we're no ordinary guy. Are we? Endless fire, which passes through all things. Cleanse soul through flame. Protect the innocent and perfect the healing stone. Let the spirit be washed and whitened by the philosophic fire. Was that some sort of fire church baptism? Or I suppose I should say... Zor Zorcastrian baptism? I guess so. I wonder who the infant was. Was that Sophia holding, holding the baby? I think it might have been. So it's the master's bedroom where the demons are, huh? Is that a letter? I don't think we're gonna get down this chute, but I do think we found something that somebody crammed in here. Push on the glyphs. Open. Oh. These are the glyphs on that clock thing, right? So, does that mean that if we hit these glyphs, 
it'll open this door? But why would we want to go down? The master's bedroom is probably upstairs, right? Then again, I don't know. If we could hear the demons bellowing from in here, then maybe the master's bedroom is very near the chapel. I assume this is some sort of chapel. Well, then again, it might not be. There's hardly... I guess these are kind of pews, but why are there vats opening onto lava in front of them? Maybe these are a very extreme religion. Maybe they're sort of like those snake handlers, like the Holy Ghost people, except with lava instead of snakes. Now, you might say that no one could survive that, and you might be right. Well, let's see what's this way. Uh, we already went around, but we didn't go in here, did we? Oh, this is the way to the master's bedroom, isn't it? I bet you it's directly above the chapel. Still, I think it might be prudent to save. Uh, call me crazy, but... I have a feeling the demons might be a bit dangerous. Although at the same time, I feel that demonic imager imagery pervades everything. Okay, a harp. What's this say? Call to meals, wake up. Oh, interesting. Wait, the seventh bell. This is that ritual that someone was drawn and quartered for screwing up, right? Well, we better not screw it up then. Although we're some sort of slippery spirit, I don't know what they would do to us. So here are their various symbols. Um, they're combinations of the symbols we saw on the fortune cookie style slips, aren't they? I see that the monks have their own sort of system of images. Uh, I guess that these are... I wonder if these are standard for the Zorkastrian church, or if they're simply a... Uh, unique to this monastery. Probably standard. It strikes me as the kind of church that would have a central authority. What is there here to look at? Anything? Well, I mean, clearly it's a tall tower. I don't deny that. I mean, look at this. This is a very impressive building in its way. In its way. Well, uh... I assume that there are... Yeah, the symbols correspond here. Let's go. We're gonna screw that up. Now the question is, what do we need to do here? We've seen most of this building. Well, not really, but we've seen a lot of it now. Enough to have an idea of where we need to go, of what we might need to do. And I guess it all comes back to the heads, huh? Mast and runes mark the way! Master's runes mark the way. This head appears to be that of a monk, judging by the way his head is shaved. Well, you're hearing the implementer's call. So, something about Yorick hearing the emblem's call, I think. Above and below the fiery towers. And above and below the fiery towers. So useful, thank you so much. And what's back here? Anything? No. Nothing. Knowing there are demons in here with us makes even nothing in its way scary, though. I guess that's what I was trying to get at earlier, even though I forgot that there was supposedly an exorcism in progress. And this leads to that chapel. The world never hands you your answers on a plate. I'm going in the order that is represented in the note we found. I'm going to hope that the note is meant to be read from top to bottom, left to right. Everything else has been translated into English for our convenience, so I'm going to say yes. Or maybe this just happens to be the version of this universe where on this timeline they speak English. And write English, too, I guess.
Wait a minute, oh, there it is. There's the snake-like design. It's interesting to note that the flame pattern thing in the middle, this hand, is only capable of going around it in a clockwise direction. I don't know if there's any significance to it, but it is interesting to consider. I wonder what these symbols are. This clearly isn't a clock, despite what I've been calling it. They probably have some sort of religious significance. This symbol here has recurred a number of times. I suspect it's some sort of key. Nothing, huh? Well, that's good. Ah, uh, I think with all these demons and hauntings and torture and war and corrupt churches and evil military industrial religious complexes oppressing the common people and perverting the morality and lives and relationships even of those at the top of the system. I think I'm in over my head, guys. But we're in we're in over our heads. Right, but if you so if we stop swimming now we'll drown. We can't stop now. I got to figure out what's going on with the heads. First things first, I guess we'll take these things. Normally when you're in a demon haunted monastery in a volcano you probably shouldn't just touch random things but I suppose I'm imprudent of course they match the icons that were on the uh, fortune cookies well most of them do anyway there's some odd looking ones that I'm not sure what they are those ones don't match or no no, no. Go back. There we go. This could get difficult. Clicking through all these different things we have. So, uh... Um... Let's listen to him again. Let's start with the monk. Well, you are hearing the implementer's call. Okay, let's listen to this guy. Above and below the fiery towers. Above and below the fiery towers. Who knows what that means? And you don't have a a, a basin beneath you. Masks and runes mark the way. Yeah, master and runes mark the way. So none of this makes any sense yet. But I'm sure there'll be some moment when it all comes together and makes sense. Which is really the um high point of these kinds of adventures. It's a monk's long dead. Bells that play. Okay. Discovering time and eternity, nothing at all. I'm gonna look at the walkthrough. Okay, I didn't actually look at the answer in the walkthrough. It says there... Emotions should be pretty clear just from the tone of their voices and their appearance. Discovering time and eternity, nothing at all. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that guy. He looks like he might be yawning or screaming, but he doesn't sound like that. What about her? They call for secrets and hidden powers. She seems pretty calm. I have no clue what this what to do here, and I think the only way you'd figure it out is by trial and error. Although I have been accused of not reading faces well before. Like, I understand the idea here. You know, each one of these is going to be an emotion, and we put one of the emotion icons in these slots under them. I understand that. But... I don't know how you'd figure it out, because the emotions don't seem to come through to me at all. They all just seem completely random. Like, there seems to be a complete disconnect between what they're saying, what they look like, and the voices that are saying these things. Maybe with the exception of the woman's voice. And I guess this demon guy sounds appropriately angry. Masks and runes mark the way! Yeah, that sounds about like what I expect a demon to sound like. But hold on, so he's anger. Right? Yeah. So, the anger one. This one? I think. 
Um, or no, I think this is the anger one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. So, so far, so good. Above and below the fiery towers. She just sounds smug. Or is that a he? I'm not sure. I've been assuming it was a man all along. These probably are different they're statues of deities or images of saints or something like that, aren't they? Probably. I'm trying to make sure I'm reading this walkthrough right. Because this almost seems unbelievable to me. Um, yeah, this guy is happy. That face is happy? His eyes look sad and his mouth is like gaping open. That's happy? Well, I guess it was probably, I mean, you know, these clearly, maybe in this alternate timeline, this is just what they think means happy. And apparently this character in the middle is supposed to be sensual, uh, sensuality. They call for secrets and hidden powers. Oh, oh, that's so sensual. Look at her expression. That totally doesn't look like a completely neutral expression. It totally looks like a, you know, like a real sensual expression. You know, you can, she, she really looks, you tell that like, kind of look in her eye like, hey, you know, let's do something. And I don't, what's this guy? Walk through, tell me what this, this is so stupid. <laughs> okay, what's this guy? Or maybe I'm the one who's stupid, I don't know. Suspicious. It's a monk's long dead. Bells that play. What the hell? I feel like this is pretty much a trial and error puzzle. <laughs> I can't say I like that noise though. Masks and runes mark the way. It's a monk's long dead. Bells that play. They call for secrets and hidden power. Above and below the fiery towers. Well, you're hearing the implementer's call. Discovering time and eternity, nothing and all. Okay, so it was a poem. A series of rhyming couplets. I wonder what it means. Wait a minute, I know what to do. Kind of. Poor wanderer, don't give up. Your goal is close, and the rewards are great. Okay, I see. Our nude friend only will help us when we were in the first area. Well, I guess the companions are cut off from us one by one. Well, up we go! Now, something that was pointed out in the walkthrough is that there was apparently, like, a door up here that I just didn't see, apparently. I... I think? Where is it? Is the walkthrough wrong? Where the heck is there a door? Oh! It's behind the... harp mechanism thing. I'm not sure what instrument that is. It probably has some distant analog in our dimension. Okay, the living quarters. Well, I guess we can't go into Brother Silius's room. Wait, we can... Oh, I see, the window's open on this one. Well, there doesn't seem to be much use to it. Why couldn't we just step over the door? I mean, it doesn't look that high. And we're able to fly, for goodness sake. Oh. This one's different from the rest. In any case, why does this one have no window? I suppose it's also sort of symmetrical to this other one in the sense that they're both different from the rest. It gives the corridor a kind of bilateral symmetry. But uh, Oh, we can... Alexandria. Oh, this is her room. Huh? Is 
Is there a baby in here? Baby? It must be another vision of what once was. Wait a minute, that baby we saw baptized earlier. Was that hers? Did Lucian impregnate her? Or, well, I don't know. She played the violin, huh? She too had an artist's soul, I suppose. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know much about violins. What's this thing? Well, it's a book. Alexandria Wolf. Oh, she wrote this when she was little. That would explain why her handwriting is not papyrus. I wonder where my mommy is. All I have left of her is this locket. Father says if I am good, I will get to see her one day in heaven. Well, I guess there's nothing else in this book, really? Okay, so all she has left of Mum is... a locket. I wonder where that is. The hourglass reminds me of uh, that horrible time room. Music? Well, clearly it is sheet music. Remarkably similar to the notation that I'm familiar with. A vision. Father? Oh, your music was lovely, Alexandria. Like the harmony of the spheres. Then why does it make you so unhappy? I was thinking how much I'm going to miss it when you've gone. Why can't you visit me at the conservatory? I can. And since I'm never getting married. Oh, you're sure? Your destiny is a nunnery. I hmm? can come back here and play for you. <laughs> until you're old and feeble and totally deaf. Forever and ever. I'm in my child. Huh. Even the children in, on this planet speak in a rather creepy way. Well, seems that way to us. It's probably pretty normal for this culture. So he was already that old when she was that young, huh? Maybe that baby we heard crying was her as an infant. Maybe she grew up in this room. Until her life, like so many others, was extinguished by the nemesis. A mirror? Wait a minute, we don't have a reflection? This only adds to my theory we're a ghost. Maybe we're able to look like a human in order to fool people like the monk and the soldier. And that's not a book, apparently. I guess it's on a plate. It's probably a slice of cake. I see she has a spit tune. Maybe... I don't know. I wouldn't have a spit tune, but I'm not her. Maybe she liked her tobacco. Oh, she has a painting on her wall of that saint in hell. I suppose she grew up on those stories. Really, can you imagine growing up in a monastery like this? Frankly, I'd be scared that some of the monks may prey on her. I mean, she's a young girl, and they're totally cut off from women in here. Oh, another open room. Brother Will, huh? These cells are... Well, I don't really have much experience with monasteries, so I don't know if they're above average or below average or just average. In any case, it certainly makes them worse now that the whole place is in ruins. Well, it's not in ruins, but it's abandoned and overrun with demons and that sort of thing. Wait, hold on. The candle's lit in here. So there's someone still here? That friar we met. Is he Brother Steve? I'm going to say he is Brother Steve. So this way or up the stairs first? I think I'm going to save because one thing's for sure, which is after the incident 
with the thadium, I don't want to risk anything. Well, beyond what we have to risk. I tell you, one way or another, we're going to undo what the nemesis has done. Just as he's undone the work of the alchemists. Wait, Brother Malvo! Oh, this is our alchemist's room. He must have been the head of this monastery. Well, guess we're not getting in there. I suppose that is where the demons are, isn't it? I guess we walked down the stairs backwards. I've done that before. This is a much better lit room. Man, in here you can almost imagine people who are alive and not all murdered or insane or possessed by demons or mutilated or left to starve and die in cages. I suppose this fellow is some important person. I bet you he's some kind of senator. And, uh, yeah. His outfit certainly leaves me more confused about what time period this might be, but that's kind of irrelevant when you're on a completely different timeline, isn't it? And here is some politician giving him a medal. I bet that it's recognizing his services for doing something or other. I have to say, he really doesn't seem like he was a bad guy. Um, a bit puritanical maybe, but he's a monk. You know, he, he wasn't torturing anybody, or trying to get his son to kill him, or spreading, or, you know, committing crimes against humanity. I wonder what this room is, though. So, this book has a medical seal on the cover. Is this some sort of infirmary? Oh, so, chapter 7, of which there is no cure. If the boils blacken, the fever climbs, and the skin begins to fester and pus, then the alert f the alert physic. Okay. Oh, I get it. Like, a, f a physician who's alert. In any case, this doesn't sound good. So, dear father, I have investigated all the texts I can and researched extensively your disease. There's no known treatment, Sartorius. So, Sartorius has been here. Well, of course, because all of the, uh, these alchemists knew each other. Dear father, you must accept the death that will come for all of us, someday. Perhaps you would like to, or like you to, to, feel? Oh, to be. Perhaps you would like to be included in my experimental work. There are certain risks, of course. Dear Father, I am encouraged by your zeal in finding the quintessence. No, your zeal in finding the quintessence. I do not mean to be discouraging, uh, lest, I don't know what it's saying. Oh, but, I don't, so alchemists have searched for ages and no one's found it. There are four elements we must master, and four metals we must purify. Much as we have found each other, we must search out two others who have the will and courage to take on this study. S. So Sartorius was the son of Malvo? Or was there somebody else in the monastery who... Who... I don't know. In any case, this is interesting. So, he was interested in immortality to save his father's life. Speak of the devil, here it is. All compacts made with the implementers are dependent upon... Umen agency. Is that a typo, or is an Umen some kind of spirit? Anyway, so reads the binds of the mortal from the first book of Yorick. If thou dost not hearken unto our voices, we... Wait, hold on. Oh, hold on. Never mind. I thought that they said thou doth, but no, it's thou dost. That's correct. We will afflict thee with hot and seating fever. If thou dost not keep our many thousand commandments, we will make the lunatic ineffected with a heavy spirit. 
we will make the lunatic if thou dost not observe what is observable we will dissolve thee with palsy so that the enterprises are hindered and thy mouth stopped that thou canst not speak if thou dost not suffer thy magic to do our yeah yeah so here we have a from I suppose Sartorius so Malvo I am familiar with the old school of alchemy they believed that pure love was the fifth element my father and I have refuted that naive, albeit charming, philosophy. Read this. S. Well, what is it? What is the fifth element? I suppose we're not that interested. They've a pen there to take notes in the margins. Wait, look at that clock. I used to have a clock exactly like that. Or my parents did. This confirms that this seems to be in a fairly recent time on this timeline. Almost contemporary. Letters. Malvo. Oh, Sophia. That's the uh, water alchemist. Our plans may be falling apart. Alexandria has, I believe, fallen in love with Lucian. Oh, hold on. Wait, was it Sophia? Was it Sophia who wrote in Papyrus? Well, in any case, she's not doing it now. Our plans may be falling apart. Alexandria has, I believe, fallen in love with Lucian, you remember. Kane's son. Ah, uh, yeah. Nothing we do seems to have any impact on them, as if they were under some strange spell. You must put a stop to it. She has come so far with her music. Act quickly, or it will all have been for nothing. So Sophia subscribed to this old, stupid moral system, too. Dearest Malvo, you will be glad to know Alexandria is flourishing here. She has a gift, of that I am certain. I have given her books on the harmony of the spheres, and I believe she hears the notes in her dreams. Such a queer little thing. I see how she has won your heart, old monk. This is a different process. At times, I am uncertain. Oh, wait, this is a difficult process. At times, I am uncertain. I don't know how hard to push, but I will not let you down. Such strange parents we make. Sophia. Wait, Sophia was her mother? Or probably like an adoptive mother is the impression I'm getting. It seems very dangerous to have these pits in the floor of lava. Given that we're on the second story, well, I suppose the mountain might be sloping. But how is this building not on fire if the lava is that close to it? And given how huge these slots are, you know, one step and you fall in and die. I suppose they're always surrounded by death here, though. That's the point of religion, isn't it? Well, of the transcendental religions as opposed to the religions that are... Uh, I forget what they're called in anthropology, but are more concerned with, say, ensuring good harvests. Fool's gold, I guess. What's this thing? A samovar? Wait, what? I tell you, he's watching everything we do. I can sense it. He's dangerous. And he'll do anything he can to get what he wants. Our only hope of survival is to give him our secret. Have you gone mad? I don't want to die. We can't give in to him. He's insane. Must be strong. We can't cave in to this, this nemesis. They met in here, huh? I see. I think that that was all of them except for Cain. Sartorius. I have recently come into possession of a most unusual relic. A mirror known among the... Zorcastrians at the Implementer's Eye. Or known as, not at. I apologize, I am... I never learned cursive. Like an ancient... And see, I don't know what that is. Oh, an ancient sense stone, I think. It, it alters the words of the f the faithful to illuminate hidden truths. 
Hopefully it will expedite my attempt to refine the alchemical essence of iron. Perhaps Yorick takes pity on this old sickly monk and sends help at last. Malvo. A very, very popular monk that, or saint this guy is. He seems in, all, in some sense to have almost supplemented their actual deity. In any case, I wouldn't mind getting a hold of this mirror. Although, I expect the nemesis may have already taken it or perhaps just broken it. That's the sort of thing he would do. A balance. There was one like this back in the lab in the palace. Oh, here's the mirror! What good is a top if it cannot spin? What use is a key without a keyhole? What purpose is there in bashing a ball? What is the color of fire to a hungry lion? What point is there bellowing about the... the... the heat? What the heck? Oh, I see, when it's on top of this sheet. Okay. Well, I'll be leaving with this mirror then. We can't take that for some reason. It would make more sense to, so if we needed to consult it again, we could just go back. But here, well no, this isn't the book that the note said to consult. It was over here, wasn't it? So it was. What? You're not gonna use it? No, I guess not. So all we have right now is the mirror. I guess that might have to be good enough. Though, who knows what we'll do with it. Can we... No. These pictures just are what they are, I guess. Or wait a minute, was the other man who was in that vision... Also Kane? Like, was Kane there? I thought Kane had a beard. But I guess that Malvo has a beard. So the clean-shaven guy was... Kane. Yeah, I'll go- let's go with that. So I don't really feel like we found anything new. Really at all. What is there left in here? I feel like I've looked everywhere. But I mean, I, I guess I haven't. Uh... You know, maybe it makes sense that we didn't let our back be to that door. Since, after all, there are demons in there. Who knows what's going on with them? You don't know what's going on with demons. You never know what you're dealing with when you're dealing with demons. So, I guess what we could do is ring the seventh bell. Pattern, right? I'm not sure why we would or what that would accomplish. So here's the part where I reveal what the seventh bell pattern is. Okay, remember the voices that say the poem? It's the order that those guys said the poem in and the emotions they correspond to. I suppose with happy at the very end. That being said, let's uh, start with, well, I need to remember the symbol of anger. I think this is anger. So yes, first anger, and then, uh, let's see, suspicion, which itself looks like anger, ironically. Then sensual, which I easily remember, it's the most distinctive. Bored, which is a flat line. Fear, which is the screaming face. And finally, happiness, which is... I suppose it could be seen as a smile. Looks good to me, but we're gonna save first.
climb a rope, huh? It'll be tough, but you gotta do what you've gotta do. What the heck? Is that doing anything? N no Is it just ringing the bell? What bell though? It just attaches to a beam. What is this? Well, I don't know what this is and I don't claim to So whatever Really, why did I do that? Well, at least we're not going to be drawn and quartered. Although, we could probably get away. No, hold on, there must be some reason this is here, right? Well, whatever, fine. Woo! It turns out this is what you gotta do with the rope. And unlike some of these things, this one is absolutely not my fault. You see how we get a quick glimpse of the window? You gotta click on it. Apparently. Which strikes me as honestly impossible, but... Oh boy, this is not gonna go well. Whoa! We did it! We got up here. The lava must be directly beneath us, huh? This place is very hot. I feel like most of the places we've been to so far have been very cold. Even the desert for some reason felt cold to me, even though it was a sand dunes desert. Versus, for example, the more uncommon icy rocky deserts, like Antarctica for example. Oh, I think that's Sophia. Not sure what that item on the right is. A lot of candles here. Red and blue and white and kind of red, sort of brown, I suppose. And images of fire. It's a nice painting. Seems like very modern decor for a monastery. Come to think of it, if this is a monastery, why is this better for two people? Was there, I mean, there must have been a couple living here, right? I would think so. Another Persian-style rug. Ah, here we go. Stuff. All sorts of stuff. But this is the only book that interests us. Not this ancient, thick, rotting volume that's probably some Zorkastrian equivalent of uh, Aquinas. A medical journal? Last night, I dreamt of a nightmarish ride through the impoverished classes. The dream haunts me. I am... I am... Donged? D I don't know, by the dint and sheer noise. My coach tips over and the crowd closes in on me like an egg crushing me like the grip of earth. They're in... They're in... Sp I don't know. Something me like the f fire of emotion. Despair fills me and then... Air. Sweet, sweet air cleans away the crowds. Is this a sign of my fallen state or simply my work? Your fallen state? Do you feel that you failed your duties as a monk by researching alchemy, wanting to live forever because really you were human. You couldn't do the inhuman saintly thing and not fear death because at heart you are human. I like the uh, friends piece. Oh, it's a photo book. Well, there's young Alexandria. So this is a 925. So I'm sure with this I could figure out exactly how old she is, uh, or was when the nemesis killed her. At least how old she was when, say, she was sent to the conservatory and had fallen in love with Lucian. 
But anyway, I, I don't feel like doing that. Though I suppose I should. So, dear, uh, dear Malvo, as we discussed, I will bring her to you one week after birth. Do not underestimate the importance of your task, her spiritual progress, and the... Oh, the purification of her soul is essential to the process. She will be a gift to all mankind. Oh wait, she was sent- so she's Sartorius's daughter? What are you talking about, Sartorius? Is she somehow religiously important to you? Like, is she important to your alchemy? In any case, Malvo really doesn't seem like a bad guy at all. Why- why is he keeping company some random, if far from modest, monk keeping company with Cain? Anyway, Father Malvo, I was much moved by your tale of the orphan child. I see, so she was an orphan who somehow passed into Sartorius's care. As a result, in a spirit of goodwill, I have agreed to grant your request. You may take this baby and raise her until she reaches maturity. Zoruk, or Yuruk, be with you, the Grand Inquisitor. So this is from Sophia again. This is in 935. So, the first one is a 925, so that's 10 years later. Uh, dearest Malvo, I am delighted by Alexandria's progress. I think that your use of puzzles to sharpen her mind has been, uh, her mind and spirit is working beautifully, and already I can see promise in her music. I will be saving a seat for her in the conservatory, yours truly, Sophia. Okay, so Sophia was the head of a conservatory. These really don't seem like the types who would be in league with a ruthless military man. And I suppose these are the students at the conservatory. Ten years later, again. So is she 30 when she was murdered? Okay, so and this confirms Alexandra is the one who wrote it, who wrote it. I think that I'm not good at talkating. Um, who, she's the one who wrote in Papyrus. Dear Father, I miss you. Madam Sophia seems to be paying much attention to me. She believes that in my soul I possess the very power of music, and with practice I will find the precious notes, which are the harmony of the spheres. I'm not so sure. Everyone believes my music is strange. Do you think me strange? I know I am lonely. Or, I know am lonely. So I guess it's like, I do you think I'm strange? I don't know if I'm strange, but I know I'm lonely. Always missing you, Alexandria. I suppose that's her, uh, on stage. Dear Father, I've met someone for... I've met someone, and for the first time in months, I feel optimistic. His name is Lucian Kane, and he is the one person who seems to understand my music. When around him, I don't have to apologize for who I am or what I believe. I finally found my kindred spirit, as you always promised I would. Be happy for me. You're Alexandria. And she even signed it with a little music note. So, this is a few weeks later. Father, there is something strange going on and I have to get out of here. Lucian wants to marry me. We will come to you at the next full moon. Marry us and give us your blessing for the future. I know your concern for purity of the spirit, but remember, not all of us are destined to marry Yorick and live in a monastery. I see, he wanted her to become a nun. We can't keep going, even though there's clearly a ton more material in this book. But this does give us a bit of information. I suppose we just get kind of disinterested in that kind of stuff after looking at them for a little while. Well, here's a strange looking book. It's all blurry. Huh. It's like magic eye. I suppose this is a memento mori sort of deal. Although, then again, the skulls have been everywhere. This entire nation seems to 
incorporate skulls extensively into their sort of national imagery. I suppose it's probably uh, stems from religion. I'm not sure what to make of this mark, but wait, what? We can't take the mirror off? That's peculiar. Hold on, how many skulls are there there? Four? Five. And how many flames are there? Five, all in different colors. I wonder if there's some kind of connection. Yeah, we're not getting that door down. Hmm. What can we do to these? Anything? It would seem not. I mean, it's very nice decor, don't get me wrong, but... Huh. I don't want to leave this place because it's difficult to get up here. But what is, what is there here? Clearly this room, which I suppose might have been... Or I suppose this... Wait a minute, hold on. Is this... Molno's room? Where the demons are? There aren't any demons here. And that's why we can't open the door, right? Yeah! That's totally what this room is. That would explain the bed, the journals, the photos. Wow. An entire shelf full of what in my collection or would be like... I mean, these kind of books are not cheap. Whoa! What? Did we just skateboard down this tunnel? Huh? Oh. There is a hidden passage. This wasn't a dead end at all. Though, I still feel we're no, we're no closer to figuring out what's going on in here. For example, how did we even get in the monastery? Did we phase through a hole in the floor? How does that make sense? We've gotten the tones that let us get into his room. And I feel that we know more about him now and perhaps a little more about what's going on, but what else are, what else are we missing? Well, obviously, the clock thing in here. Well, not in here, but beyond here. I have to wonder what this clock thing is. It isn't a clock, of course. Uh, walk through time. I see. Okay. Naruhodo! Eureka! We figured it out. These symbols. They stand in for letters. That note. It showed us push on the glyphs. Written in these very glyphs. What we need to say instead is open. Oh. Uh... P. E. N. I have a feeling it didn't open any of these doors, but open that grate back in the uh, chapel, or whatever that room was. This is truly an amazing building. I suppose building it in a place where it was so doomed to burn away is a lens to this beauty. You know, it's what the Japanese would call a ware no mono. Which, I believe, first came up on this channel a long time ago. Back when the professor brought it up in contact. Um, perhaps now I should save again. Because going into darkly lit you know, tunnels and demon-haunted fire monasteries doesn't strike me as the best course of action.
It didn't open it. And this door. They're all locked. Then what did the glyphs open? Wait a minute. Is that a gate? Hold on. Yeah, it is a gate. This is how you get to the lower stories, but it looks like we're not interested in it. Wait a minute. Oh, there's another gate there. Maybe that gate w has opened. It would explain why the mechanism is in this room. Sure enough, it has. We can get to the lower stories now. Thanks to industrial strength magic, all objects are protected from theft. Industrial strength magic? Is this some sort of monk museum? Ah yes, the Troll Tech Anti-Theft System 710. Cla classic. The question is, how much can we look at stuff in here? I'm going to save again. What is this thing? It reminds me of a toy that I had when I was young and I somehow in my head associated with occult rituals. Oh, it's a green man. No, oh, keep it open. What's this? Is this a buttons? Alarm system deactivated. Good! That's terrible! Anybody could just open that up and deactivate it that easily? What good is it then? In any case, here we have Giant Serpent, Oracle of Bach. I like that sculpture. And what do we have here? Ruby from Yorick Shield. Thank you. Wait. From Yorick's shield? This is a sacred artifact! And I'll be, uh, taking it with me. The issue is, we're come off as a kleptomaniac because we don't know what this would do for us yet. The presence of incredibly weird stuff going on by Bizboss. Huh. That sounds like a really good book, and I'm sad we can't read it. I should look that up on... I should see if I can get that for my collection. These are some bookish monks. Magic wand, standard issue. I see, so this is so Zorkastrianism doesn't consider magic to be satanic. As they shouldn't, since it doesn't exist. Uh... And... These are all just magic spells, huh? There's some very valuable looking stuff on these. Like, for example, what is this thing? It almost looks some sort of, like some sort of bellows, but it comes to a point as if it's a pool stick. Or a, uh... I suppose... It could be some sort of... Syringe? I don't know. Fee Hourglass facilitates time travel. I'm going to assume that this isn't true. Because if it were, the Nemesis has what it needs to completely take over the world forever right there. There's no need for anything else. What a dark corner this is. Oh, a uh, crystal ball? Some sacred granola. The priests have blessed that granola. It's like... It's like kosher halal granola. And here we have a crystal ball from the period of Moog. But we don't want to look at it. You see, if I were here, I'd be looking at all these books. Looking over the spines for classic titles. Maybe the poetry of John Donne. Or Paradise Lost or something like that. Sheath of the Grew Slayer. Now this is a historical artifact if ever there was one. The Grew Slayer is a man a legend. Or woman. I confess, I don't know that much about the Gru Slayer. Okay, so we got that there. Hold on. Oh, a trap door. Well, 
I want to look at all these exhibits first, because you never know when something's going to come in handy. So here is an ancient shroud. Uh. And here is more swords. So this is... It's just a stick? I mean, don't get me wrong, Vilbaz the Great is quite the personage, but just a stick? And here is the legendary blade given to King Intherion by the Lady of the Lake. With this sword, he was... Well, he unknowingly did open up the Sacred Realm and lead to its corruption into the Dark World. A twisted place, a place like Hell, where people are warped to reflect their inner sins. Anyway, so here we have the Jewel of Jerrymoor. Well, we don't want to take that one. And we shouldn't because it's a sacred artifact. Uh, here we have the Torch of Endless Fire. Sounds good to me. There's a lot of dark stuff around here. And here we have a replica of Yorick's shield. Um, so is Yorick an actual historical figure? He's probably not. I'm gonna say that Yorick is a some... Like, there might have been a Yorick, but of course he didn't really go to hell. Here we have... Mythical Universe, what? Is that... Earth? I can't tell from this angle for sure. I mean, it might be, like, is that... That looks kind of like Australia, but it's right up against the other things. Maybe this is when Pangea was breaking apart. I don't know. I mean, this is probably the same planet as we're on. It's just in a different timeline. Uh, and here we have Obizbaz. I think earlier it was Bilbaz. But either way, those are some impressive magic scrolls. Written from top to bottom, no spaces. Probably no punctuation. It's all Latin. Uh, now what? I guess... Well, first, save again. And with that out of the way, let's go. Oh god, it's dark! What the hell? Gah! Oh, it's a mausoleum! Or a catacomb, I guess I should say. I'm not surprised the monks have something like this under the monastery. The most sought of objects. The shield of Yorick. They talk? Is this normal? I can't be normal. Listen to yourself, mackerel phones. They're dead. Flames were all around. I suppose that... Then again, I've been doing nothing but interacting with dead people this whole time. I doubt even the nemesis itself is alive in the normal sense. This does not look safe. Go! What? Who are you? What the hell? Was that the nemesis? I don't like that noise. I really, really don't like that noise. What if there's a Gru around here? Or maybe, maybe it's just Satan. It could be either, it could go, could go either way. I mean, there's undead around here. They're talking mummies. God. Is that an open gate? Well, clearly it is. It's a good thing we have this, is all I can say. This should light the way, right?
light the way, please. I don't want to walk this way. You have a torch. Take it out. Oh, wait. This wasn't that dark after all, I guess. Here we go. Nice. This doesn't look like a good thing to touch. I have a feeling we're going to open it up and... Well, it's just a coffin. They're just dead. Save again. Please. It's dead. We've talked to dead people, but that doesn't mean they can get out and hurt us. Yorick? Wait a minute. Are you telling me that Yorick is buried beneath this monastery? No wonder this the people here love him. He's the, this particular monastery's patron saint. They keep his bones interred here. I'm sorry? What? Huh? Why would we do that? Why would we climb into the coffin? What the hell? Wait a minute. I thought this shield was the most precious treasure that's been lost for generations. It was just in the basement of this monastery? In the monastery where they were looking for it? Where they have historians curating museums and they didn't have this? What the hell? That doesn't make any sense. It was right there. You're telling me that they never opened the coffin and looked? But if this is Yorick's coffin, where's Yorick? Well, in any case... Get out. Get the hell out of that coffin. So... You don't want to climb into a coffin. I'm still kind of in shock that we even thought to do that. Oh, okay. There's air down here. There must be a way outside somewhere. The shield got through the flames, right? It absorbed the flames. Didn't expect that much. Do we still have it? No. That's it. No more of that. Well, who spoke then? I really can't believe it. Yorick was entombed here. And his actual shield was here. I can't... I can't believe it. And how could they not have known it was here? Skulls? Oh, I get it. These are like those skulls we saw in the book. Though I can still hear that creature. So... What do we do with these skulls? I suppose we arrange them like they were arranged in the book, right? Yes. So this one goes here. This one turns that way. This one turns that way. And this one will turn... No, not that way, but this way. What was that? It sounded like a door opening. But I have this feeling that there's a monster down here. So that's interesting. Were those real skulls? I suppose in all likelihood, the answer is yes. What in the world? Is this some sort of industrial stuff? Was this a secret alchemy room? But why did the flames appear? Who put the flames there and how? What is this? Is some, I suppose it's in boiling water. It's easy to see how they kept the water boiling. Or actually, hold on. Wait. Okay. So you put something in there. Wait a minute. This is the room we've been trying to get to, right? This is the room where, we're, where we'll forge the next element. Or the next metal. This is probably the iron we've meant to refine. And that's a key to who knows what. This is the work of Thakyami... Thakyamiar. 
each no earth and air, fire and water, the the codless e- endless battling of elements, fixed and volat. Oh, I see. It's written in a sort of old. Oh. This is the work of the alchemist Earth and... Yes, yeah, so this is the work of THE alchemist. Earth and air, fire and water, the endless battling of elements, fixed and volatile, yet not one, can exist without the other, three held fast. So must it be with the great eclipse, where the moon holds the sun fixed, and the two warring rulers of the cosmos marry in conjoined harmony. Male to female, gold to silver, king to queen, and the quintessence governs all. If you say so. This alchemy stuff might be nonsense, but it's beginning to creep me out. Or clearly it's not complete nonsense. They found something here, judging by how screwed over they've been. So... What is this? Does this go here? You know, I'm gonna. S- well, I just saved before I went in here, I think, so I'm not going to. Actually, I'm gonna save now. Uh, after we get away from here. So we have this thing. Okay, okay. We're pouring molten lava in. We can probably shut it off now. So, what did we just do? Do we insert this? Do we insert this? No. Well, I suppose this goes here. But it's not hot. So, oh, okay. I don't know how to use these alchemical mechanisms, but let's say we need to have this turned. And now something will happen here. Oh, yeah, it will. Okay, we need to have it arranged like the flames that were on the wall in his bedroom, right? So it wasn't just a stylish piece of artwork he had on the wall. It's also because it was used for this machine. It was his way of remembering how it worked. Are these rocks? I mean, they must be. They can't be tree roots, not here. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe this is where we go to... I don't know... seal it? To cool it? Oh wait, hold on, here's another piece of equipment. Or no, that's the lion. Well, what? Oh hey, no, hold on, here is is another piece of equipment. See, there we go. What's this? Now there's a spot for the key if I've ever seen one. It's like that riddle said, what good is a you know, is a key without... Oh. Is a keyhole if there's nothing to open, but now what? We close it? Oh, okay, so now it's doing something. Open it again. Let's see what it did. No, it did nothing. Okay. Maybe let's go back here. Let's take this. And let's see what happens if we, if we put it in this. I expect nothing, but it's worth a shot. This does appear to sort of flatten it out, although I imagine the noise it makes will be ear-shattering. And, uh, turn it. Okay, so we have it open. Then we go here, then we turn the key, and then we shut it. Turning the key sort of winds it up, as it were. Or not. I, I, I guess. Okay, here we go. 
We just needed to open and close it again. See? I'm amazed that didn't make a much more horrible noise using sheer force to smash metal into this shape. Metal against metal. Oh, man. It's unpleasant just thinking about it. But soon this metal will be the special seal of our alchemist. It'll, it must be. Uh, so first, we're gonna turn this wheel again. Also, might I add, this is some incredibly heavy-duty piping if it can hold lava. Was this built without the other monk's knowledge? It couldn't be. It would be impossible to build something like this in secret. Well, maybe not. Oh, are the flames not in the correct color sequence? I thought that I had them in the correct sequence, but I suppose I might have been mistaken. So, I mean, let's see. Top one is... How about now? No. Okay, let's try this again. So this one is kind of orange. This one's like yellow. Okay, this one's blue. This one's white, but it's hard to see it because the pipe it's heating is obstructed from us. I admit it did take me a little bit to realize that we're gonna take this bolus, put it in the lion's mouth, and it rolls down these pipes and the flames will heat it as it goes down and arrives in here, where we'll cool it using the um, bellows. Or not. Really, what the heck am I missing here? We all make mistakes. This was mine. This is an acid bath. The bolus needs to be treated. And so it was. Normally it wouldn't be safe to handle such things. But we don't have no skin. So it doesn't matter too much. Okay, now put it in here. Time for dinner, lion. Well, that's, um, pulsating very strangely. It ended in exactly this shape. I'll be. Well, there you go, Molvo. Yeah, he didn't really do anything wrong as far as I could tell. I might not support his religion, but he's hardly a terrible monster of a person. He's not like Cain. No wonder Cain felt so guilty. Another vision of the eclipse. Or I guess the eclipse is getting closer, right? Will the nemesis escape from its prison in its own bolus? Once the eclipse occurs? I guess so. The libation returns. Is it wine or something? Was that his death? What, did the nemesis just walk in and stab him? Well, Molvo, let us speak. Your wanderings in my world have stirred many memories. 
You must understand, we meant no harm. Alexandria was my child. I thought I was saving her from Lucienne and from a hasty marriage, protecting her destiny. But I couldn't protect her from the nemesis. He was obsessed with our knowledge. I now know I was wrong, but I never got to tell her. I never got to say goodbye. Surely, this must be hell. There is a way to bring them back, but we need the four metals. Please, let me have one last chance. I know you're dying anyway, but I believe you. My apologies, by the way, for almost certainly mispronouncing your name. Well, back to the planetarium, I guess. It's really terrible what's happened to them. But who is this nemesis, anyway? I'm still not quite clear. So I suppose that was... Saturn. For such a fierce deity, the man really was a pretty good guy. Did he metaphorically eat his child by trying to keep her away from happiness? He clearly thought she had some kind of destiny she had to fulfill, but did she really? I don't know. I mentioned that there was a scene that somebody said was the most terrifying thing to them. And we found it. <laughs> <laughs> 